We have Barry Matt Loudermilk uh, on with us. Barry is a congressman from the great state of Georgia. He is on the uh, House Administration Subcommittee on Oversight that is currently working to clean up the mess of Liz Cheney and her January 6th committee. Barry joins us now. Uh, Barry, I've got several things I want to cover with you, but let's let's start with the Liz Cheney thing. You told me on the phone once, um, and I read it in your report, that they um, did. They were informed that they had to turn over all of the records, all of the testimony, and they didn't. In fact, they tried to delete it. Then they said they didn't know about any other files. Then when you found the files, they were locked, and they said, oh, we don't know anything about a password. That's correct. <laughs> And uh, is it you're, a, you're right, man. Is it a, is it a, I mean, has that happened before? I mean, have, is this normal when you switch? No, it, it is not normal. And there are clear rules in the House of Representatives of what should be preserved, what has to be preserved, and what you don't have to preserve. If Let's say there was, uh, you interviewed somebody that was totally irrelevant. They had nothing to say. Uh, I mean, you're just like, whoops, we should have never even talked to you. That's something you probably don't have to preserve, uh, especially if you didn't use their testimony. But anything that's uh, relevant or exculpatory, um, then, it, or even, let's say, the transcript or the videos of your interviews are something you definitely have to keep. And we know for a fact, because they admitted they – discarded the thousands of videos because every person they interviewed, they videotaped. And this is extremely important. And, and of all the, the information that they didn't keep or they hid or they deleted, these are the most critical. Um, and they totally got rid of all of those videotapes and admitted that they did because they said, hey, you've got the, uh, you've got the written transcripts of these. Well, first of all, we didn't have all the written transcripts. They sent some to the White House, some to, to Homeland Security, which we're still working on getting. Um, and there were some documents, and we still don't know what those are, that they deleted from the hard drives. They told us they were they were giving us four and a half terabytes of, of digital data. We got less than three terabytes. That's why we started. Uh, that's why we hired a forensics team to look at these hard drives. Maybe there's something corrupt. Maybe there's something missing. And that's where they recovered these password encrypted documents that have been deleted. So Barry, you're right. When I asked the chairman, he says, I don't even know what you're talking about, much less know the password. So Barry, if, if I did this and I was under investigation and I did this, um, I would immediately go to jail. Obstruction of justice. Correct. I would go to jail. Mm -hmm. All of us would, but nobody in Congress ever seems to worry about that. There's, it doesn't seem to be anything <clears throat> that sends anyone to jail. Why? Well, that's we're going to see what is available. One argument is the speech and debate clause, but that is to protect you from uh, lawsuits or legal yeah. action for what you do in the course of your business um, uh, being a legislator. I, I've already been threatened with uh, with being subpoenaed or sued just for revealing the truth, but. I'm protected under the speech and debate clause yeah, because we have a real legislative purpose in what we're doing. Correct. You, the, um, the, the Congress and the Senate and the president need protection as they are pursuing their job. So if you right. want to make a claim on the floor, you can make a claim and nobody can sue you, et cetera, et cetera. But we're not talking about that. We are talking about right. the willful destruction of things the people of the United States paid for we paid millions of dollars and if they don't classify things to keep us away from it and to keep many of of you guys who have oversight away from it then they just seem to destroy it that can't stand it cannot and we this is kind of treading new territory i don't know that uh anything to this level not i shouldn't say hasn't happened before but never been exposed um, and so th there's there's so much more investigation that we're doing. I 
don't want to really opine on what could happen in the future because we may uncover a whole lot more that even adds on to just how how obstructive that they really were. Um, and you also have the issue of, well, you have most of the, the members of that committee are still in Congress, but you do have Liz Cheney and, and uh, Adam Kinzinger and some others that are not. They're not currently protected by some of those same things. But it also gives us the ability of those that are in Congress, we do have certain actions that can be taken within the body. So there's a lot of questions there. And what I've told our team is let's just keep digging. Let's keep investigating. Let's keep uh, going down the path we're going because right now we have literally uh, informants coming out of the woodwork. Now that they've seen what we're doing is we're doing it in an unbiased manner. We're just trying to get to the truth. Um, and we even have folks who, let's say, would, would more lean toward Democrats that are coming to us saying, mm. I've got information. I don't like Donald Trump, but I hate the injustice that I see being done. Right. And this isn't all about Donald Trump. This is about the railroading of American citizens like I've never seen before. Um, the, um, it was uh, Jim Jordan yesterday issued a letter on behalf of our journalist, Steve Baker, to the United States attorney, uh, Matthew Graves, uh, and is demanding all of the documents and communication in, internal to know why this guy was treated differently than the New York Times. Are we going to find yeah. anything on this? Is this uh, Nobody believes that any of this is going to change a darn thing, which is frightening, quite honestly. Well, it I can anticipate what the FBI is going to say, and I've got some personal theories about this, but um, they're going to say this is an active investigation, so we can't provide you anything. Of course, of course. Um, which is potentially, let me just say this, potentially one of the reasons that they've done this is so certain information that he was working on can't be uh, subpoenaed or that won't be provided to Congress. Um, that's one theory of why they've gone after him and not the others, because he was on to something. Look, my dad, a World War II veteran, used to tell me all the time, you took the you took the most incoming fire when you were over the target. Correct. So the fact that, you know, this has been done to Steve Baker, you know, is a red flag to me is he's on to something. Yeah. Here. And I, um, I, I know one of the things he's working on, um, I believe you do, too. And that has to be sewn up it, it, if it's. If it's false, then it's false and shouldn't be spoken of. But if it's true, it is, it's one of the worst things. I think it's regime changing. And I use the word regime intentionally. Um, I agree with you on that. And uh, people don't go to these extreme measures to cover up something that isn't real. Yes. I mean, there's got to be there, there, or they're not going to go to this level. Um. Tell me, uh, let me switch subjects again. TikTok, this bill is going through Congress today, and Stu and I uh, look at it, I think, the same way. We're for free speech, and I don't like regulating anybody. The, however, these guys are intentionally taking us down. However, is this a Trojan horse that can be used against people like us down the road? I'm in the same position as as you guys. I think there is something that needs to be done with TikTok because what people need to understand is this application is owned and operated by the Chinese Communist Party for one thing, and it's to disrupt uh, the Americans, uh, our culture, to influence the culture, but more importantly is to uh, divide us, spy on America. Exactly. Yeah. Divide us and get information. Look, some of the people who are defending TikTok are already upset about the amount of data corp- big tech is taking from American citizens every day without right. their knowledge. And right. in my in my estimation, unconstitutionally and illegally. But yet they're defending TikTok, who's doing the same thing. And it's going to an enemy of the United States. I know. So we have to be very careful because I also don't trust the government. I know that we will take any law to the extreme and try to use it. So I think it's a, it's, it's important to take the step. And I think under this legislation, which forces the the divesture of, uh, of TikTok from the Chinese communist party. And look, um, 
I want to protect Glenn Beck and the Blaze and the every other, even the liberal media. I would say the same about the Daily speech. Beast, which I despise. Exactly. But I don't think that we have to provide that same level of protection to the Chinese Communist Party. <sighs> what complex times we live in now. I, it is. It is. <laughs> just, yeah. I just. Uh, it, it definitely is. Okay. And one of the one of the reasons, Glenn, that we're going to such efforts to expose the truth is because we have never before in American history has there been this much distrust of America, of our own government, of the people in the government. And I think it, as bad as we are, we're still the best it's ever been. And there's nothing we're going through we haven't been through before in this country and overcome. We've got to get our eyes back on our cause of liberty and justice, oh, those things that our founders, um, you know, have, have envisioned for this country. Um, we have to have a healthy distrust for our, our government. That's what keeps us free. But the people also have to know that there are still people here that want you to know the truth of what happened, because if we don't know the truth, we won't stop the same thing from repeating itself. And when you look at this thing that Liz Cheney did, it isn't just the false information they put out, but when you look at uh, like Cassidy Hutchins testimony that they took hers hook, line and sinker without even questioning it. Two months later, they interview the driver of the SUV who was supposedly the one that Trump tried to take the steering wheel from. Right. They didn't even ask him about that event when they interviewed him. You well, they, think of anybody that would ask that. He had to interject it himself that that never happened. They also only referenced pipe bomb five times in almost a thousand page report. They're not they're not asking the questions on the pipe bomb. That, and that doesn't make right. sense. Five times. But they mentioned Donald Trump 1900 times, 1900 times. And. The president of the United States was not even part of the tasking from the resolution that established the committee. The security failure at the Capitol was, and they didn't hardly address that whatsoever. This was designed from the beginning to uh, legislatively prosecute Trump and to, to push a false narrative. You can see it all the way through from the documents that they tried to keep from the American people, which is any exculpatory information that they suppressed, uh, documents that they deleted, and the questions they didn't ask people that they were afraid would contradict other information they got that they liked. That is not a real investigation. That is just cherry picking, trying to find whatever will support your predetermined narrative. That's not the way our system is, is designed here in the United States. So our job is just to put the truth out there to the American people and let them decide, Thank you. you know, what really happened. Yes, thank you. Um, Barry uh, Loudermilk, he is uh, from the great state of Georgia. Uh, we'll talk again, Barry. Thank you. Keep your head up. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks, Glenn. Keep up Keep the good work.